Late 2022 and early 2023 were some of the worst times for any software engineer. What am I talking about? Well, obviously I'm talking about the giant wave of layoffs that simply destroyed so many people that worked in tech. And before I go into detail, I know not all these people are software engineers, but I can confidently say that a lot of them were. And how bad was it, you may be asking? Well, let's look at this graph. In the last three months of 2022, there were 84 thousand employees laid off by 470 companies now that's already bad i mean in three months almost 90,000 people laid off that's crazy but then in the first three months of 2023 this year there were 167 thousand people laid off two times more than q4 2022 by 582 companies i mean this that number still floors me so if your math is still on, that's 251,000 people laid off at a thousand different companies. I mean, that's 42,000 people laid off every month for six months. And no surprises, the top companies that are laying people off were Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Amazon with featured appearances like Salesforce, Twitter, IBM, Uber, Airbnb, Lyft, Zillow, Instacart. I think you get it. It was like every tech company. And don't even get me started on the crypto tech companies, like just moment of silence for them. So why am I bringing this up now? You may be asking yourself, this was at the beginning of the year. We're in August now. You don't hear about massive layoffs in the news anymore. So everything must be better, right? Things are better. No, no, they're not. No, they're no. No, big tech is actually still a massive shit show because since the layoff, there was an incredible influx of new people in the open market. There's way more people in the market with way less jobs to apply to. How much longer will this difficult job market last? Some context, I graduated from Cornell with my master in CS in May. And while I've applied to over 350 postings since January, I've only had one first round interview so far. LinkedIn had a junior entry level available. It was open one week ago and it showed 1,400 applicants. Being new to the industry, do I seriously even have a chance? I mean, honestly, this is scary. And these two are not alone. There's a lot of people that I get messaged all the time or in chat over at Twitch that say, hey, I've been applying to all these companies and I haven't had a single reply or have had very few replies. No good opportunity has come so far. The few job postings that are available have hundreds, if not thousands of applicants. The chances of you even hearing back are so slim and so stacked against you. And I mean, if you aren't a senior principal engineer, there's like literally no job openings. Not, there's very few for juniors and there's, you know, a bit more for mid-level, but there's still not that many. And I already hear the people tell me, Melky, there's more jobs than just big tech and you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. There are more. There's plenty of great companies that we've never even heard of that offer great salaries, great benefits, the whole nine, okay? The whole works. But I don't blame the people that want to work at Fang. I don't. There's a reason why people like working there. The pay is phenomenal. The work isn't that difficult. The perks are great. And, you know, the reason I think it's the most shallow is it feels like an accomplishment if you get that badge on your resume, which sounds ridiculous but for a person who's been grinding in grad school or during college and all they wanted to is get fang on the resume i feel for them so melky what can we do well obviously you shouldn't give up but i don't have the right answer i don't have the answer i see firsthand the frustration people are spending preparing for interviews applying for jobs grinding lead code lead code lead code right see Lead code is actually what made me want to make this video in the first place because there's a huge problem with Lico right now. Like I said earlier in this entire video, there's an influx of people that want to get jobs. And how do these big companies filter a bunch of people? Well, beyond a AI screener, they go through Lead code. They give you questions. And this is nothing new. This has been around for some time. But what makes it even more difficult now is the quality and difficult of the question has been ramped up like never before. Companies want to weed out from the hundreds or even thousands of applicants which ones are worth their time, which ones are worthy 
of working for their team and company. And the best way to do that, give them an absolutely ridiculous Lico question. And not to mention the pressure's on because even getting a technical interview right now is almost impossible. So when you get it, you don't want to blow it because you got a question that you weren't preparing for or a question you may have not started hard on or this particular category is not your specialty. Like it actually sucks. Some people love doing lead code. Some people hate it, but it's a necessary evil right now. If I was in this situation, this would be what I would do. This would be the, my plan if I was unemployed. I would become an absolute social butterfly. I would join Discord tech communities like mine. We just passed 2000 members. Link in the description below. I would join Twitter spaces talking about tech topics just to get myself to meet new people in the industry. Or I would hit up old friends that still work at their companies because I need the referral. Referrals are worth gold. If I were to cold apply to a company's website, the odds of me getting selected from the thousands of applicants are so slim. The odds are stacked against me. But a referral, I can bypass that resume BS and go straight talking to a recruiter, my chances are already higher. I would really look at postings at sites like Y Combinator or startups. And I know startups are very difficult. Working in a startup presents its own challenges, its own difficulties, and may not pay as well, but startups are a great way to meet new people, work on things you've never worked on before, and they may pan out to be something even bigger and better than what you think Fang can offer you. I'm not saying starts are easier, but right now, if you are struggling with Fang or you are struggling with lead code, open your eyes to startups. Maybe you'll really love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're struggling through this, I feel for you, my friends. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. We're here for you. Trust me, just don't quit. The grind will pay off. As I always say, time in the saddle. That's the principle we'll live here. And I gotta leave you guys with two things. One is, do you like lead code? Do you actually like it? Do you hate it? And two, you gotta power it.